So I was recently working on year-end financial statements, and I ran into a problem. When reconciling accounts with my accounting system, I had 1,239 transactions on my bank statement and 1,244 transactions on my accounting system. So in this video, we're going to look at a relatively simple way to compare these two data sets and find the differences. In other words, it's time to go hunting for a needle in a haystack. So let's get to it. All right, so I have both of these files in my downloads folder here. And the first thing we're going to do is combine the files into one table. So we'll go ahead and start with the bank statement. This is a CSV file. And the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, save it as an Excel file. So I'm going to hit F12 on the keyboard, or you can go File, Save As. We'll choose the XLSX file type. And of course, we can just rename this to Reconciliation, or I'll just call it Recon for now, and hit Enter. So we have an Excel file here. And now we're going to insert an Excel table. So with any cell selected in my data set there, I'm going to go Insert, Table, Keyboard Shortcut is Control T. We'll hit OK here, and our data is now in a table. And I'm using a table because later on we're going to use a pivot table, and it's always great to have your source data in a table when using a pivot table. Next, I'm going to add a column. We're going to call this source. And in this column, I'm going to type in the word bank. And then I'm going to double click the fill handle here to copy this down. And this just lets us know that all of these rows came from our bank statement. And I'll explain more about why we do this when we add in the next data set. And then finally, we need one additional column for the amount. And here we're just going to add the amount columns for the debit and credits. So we'll say equals. We'll type a plus here and then select the credit column and hit enter. And this just puts the amounts all in one column, and this will make it easier when we do comparisons between the data sets. Next, we're going to bring in the data from our accounting system. So I have this file exported here, and I'll go ahead and show that. This file comes out of our accounting system. It's exported from QuickBooks. QuickBooks is a popular accounting system for small businesses, but really you could be using any accounting system for this process. And so here I've exported the register for this account. All of these credit card transactions or these bank transactions were originally imported into the accounting system. So we want to reconcile these to make sure that they match up with the bank statement. So we're just going to copy and paste this data in below our table. So I'll go ahead and select all the dates here. I'm going to hit Control Shift down arrow to select all the way to the bottom. Hit Control C. And I'll jump back over to the workbook that contains our table. Here you'll notice we have two columns with dates. And this is common, especially if you're using or working with credit card transactions. And we're going to use the posted date column. So I'm going to jump down to the bottom, hit Control down or to jump to the bottom of this. And we can go ahead and paste here. You can use Control Shift V to paste values if you're on a modern version of Windows. If not, you can use Control V and then go here and paste values or many of the other ways to paste values. So we'll jump back over and we're just going to work through these columns here. I'm going to hit Control Home to go back to the top. The description or our payee, as you can see in QuickBooks, it's common that we don't always get the data coming through when we do the imports. We have a lot of blanks here, but we can still bring this data in if we want. Here I'm going to use Control Shift End to go all the way to the bottom. Shift Left Arrow a few times to just select this single column. Again, Control C. We'll jump back over here and then Control Shift V to paste. And then we also need the debit and credit column. So again, control home here. These are called charge and payment. But same thing, control shift in, shift left over, control C to copy. I'll use alt tab to jump back over, control shift V to paste. And now we have all of our data pasted in. And then we also need to add the source. So right here, I'm just going to put ACCT for accounting system, or you could put QB for QuickBooks, whatever your accounting system is, and then again, double click to copy that down. So now we know that all of these rows came from our accounting system data. I'm also gonna quickly delete the transaction date column because we don't need that, and it can get confusing if we have two date columns. Okay, so now we have the data all combined into one table. We've done all of the data preparation work here, and we can now analyze it. So for this, we're going to use a pivot table. I'm going to go Insert tab here and choose Pivot Table. And then we'll go ahead and put that on a new worksheet, and we'll say OK. Now, if you're not familiar with pivot tables yet, I do have a separate video series that covers them in more detail. I'll link that up in the description below. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the source field and put it in the columns area. That's going to list both of our sources here. 
And then I'm going to take the posted date field and put that in the values area. And that's going to give us a count of the total number of rows for each source. So you can see here that we have 1,243 rows in our accounting system and only 1,239 in the bank. So of course there's a discrepancy that we need to investigate further. And to do that, I'm going to take the amount field and put it in the rows area. Now, typically you wouldn't put the amount field in the rows area, but when we do this, we get a list of all of the amounts across both data sets. And this is telling me right here that there's a transaction for $6.47 in both the accounting system and the bank system. And of course, the grand total adds those two numbers together. We actually don't really need the grand total, so I'm going to right-click remove grand total. And I'll quickly explain how this pivot table works. So if we go over to our source data, and in the amount column here, we just filter it for 647, you can see we have these two transactions, one from the bank and one from the accounting system. So this is essentially what the pivot table is showing us right here. It's calculating the count of the transactions for each of these amounts. So wherever we have a difference between these two numbers is where we have a discrepancy. And we can calculate that with the pivot table. So I'm going to take the posted date field. I'm going to put it in the values area again. That's going to give us another count of the posted date. And we'll just select any cell in the date to column here, right click, show values as, and we're going to choose difference from. And here for the base field, we're going to choose source because we want to compare these sources. And for the base item, we'll just leave this as previous. And so what that's going to do is calculate the difference between these two numbers. You can see we get a zero here. This is kind of hard to read, and if we take the values field here in columns and move it above source, it makes it a bit easier to read. We can also rename this. This is actually the difference, and hit enter. And you'll notice that for the account column, this is blank because it cannot ca calculate the difference between anything previous to it. There's no previous field. But for the bank column, you can see here that we have a one. And this says that, of course, we have one transaction in our accounting system for $7.40 but two transactions in our banking system. So this is one of our discrepancies. Now we don't really wanna scroll through this massive list of zeros to find the ones. So another thing we can do here is sort this. So right here, we're gonna to go to more sort options. I'm gonna choose descending, and then I'm gonna to go to more options. And here I'm gonna uncheck this, or you might need to check and uncheck this. Really what we want to do is to be able to enable this field. We'll go ahead and click this, and then we're gonna select right here, cell E6 for sorting this column. We'll go ahead and say, okay, and then click okay again. And that's gonna resort this so we have these ones at the top. And then if we go all the way to the bottom of this table, you can see that we have these negative ones down here. And this is where we have more transactions in our accounting system than we do in the bank. Now, one quick tip here, I'm gonna scroll back up to the top and I'm just gonna freeze panes on row six. So I'm gonna select row six here, view tab, and then choose free paint, freeze panes. Keyboard shortcut is Alt W F F on Windows. And so now when we scroll down, we'll still have the header up there at the top. It'll be easier to read. If you're new to pivot tables, we have beginner to advanced training on pivot tables in our Elevate Excel training program. The program also covers all areas of Excel, including data automation. I'll put a link in the description where you can learn more and join us. For the next step in our investigation, we're gonna take the posted date field and move it into the rows area below the amount. And that's going to add the date for each of these transactions. Now this view can get a little bit overwhelming. One quick tip here is I'm gonna right click, expand collapse, collapse entire field. So we can see that again, we just have these two discrepancies here, and then we can expand into this one to investigate this discrepancy. So here on August 22nd, we have one transaction in our, in our accounting system and two transactions in our bank. So maybe either it's a duplicate in the bank with the credit card transaction, or one of those transactions didn't get imported into the accounting system. If we take a look at the next one here, we can see that we have one transaction in the bank and nothing in our accounting system for March 29th. So this might be a case where the transaction didn't get imported. And then if we jump down to the bottom, I'll hit control down arrow to do that. We have all of these negative one discrepancies. And you can see here we have more transactions. I'll jump into this one. We have 13 versus 12. 
And here we have an issue where the dates don't always line up. This can happen between your accounting system and your bank system. So this is probably the same transaction, just on two different posting dates. And you can see we have a negative one and then a positive one there. Same here, same here as well, and same here. But here's a negative one where we don't have a positive one for it on July 6th. So there's an issue here where we have an extra transaction in the accounting system that's not in the bank. And that's actually the same issue with all of these other transactions here. I already did the investigation work and that was the same issue here. Now, one other thing you can do here is you can take the description field that contains our vendor name and I'm gonna put that below the posted date in the rows area. And so when we expand into here, this is going to show us what the vendor name is. So this might be helpful if you are going to go investigate this in either your accounting system or banking system to try and find this transaction. So that's a way to use a pivot table to do bank reconciliations with your accounting system. Of course, this does require a bit of setup work to set up our source data here. But once we have that, we can use the power of the pivot table to really do all of this matching work for us. We didn't need to write any complex formulas, any lookup formulas or anything like that. We can really just use the pivot table to do comparisons and create this nice summary report. So I hope that helps save time with your reconciliations. In this video, we combine the two files with copy and paste, but there is a way to automate this task if you do it more frequently, which I explain in this next video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.